Welcome to this training video on data preparation in Tableau Public. You can download the workbook to follow along in your own copy of Tableau. In previous training videos, we have seen how Tableau can create maps out of data sets containing names of geographic entities like countries, cities, states, postal codes, or even zip codes. It does so by referencing an internal database of common geographic names to look up the boundaries and coordinates of these entities. But what if you want to plot other geographic entities that Tableau does not have in its database? With the spatial file connector introduced in Tableau 10.2, you can now map your own geographic entities by adding so-called spatial files, boroughs of a city, election wards, school districts, national parks, climate zones, or even the conference region of your favorite sports league can all be shown on a map in Tableau. Tableau can read in such geographic information from KML files, GeoJSON files, map info files, and this is probably the most popular type of spatial file out there, from shape files. Currently, Tableau accepts both point and polygon files. As an example, let's look at a shape file that shows the major river basins of the world. To open it, we go to Connect, Spatial File, Shapefiles typically come in bundles with different file types. We want to open the one with the SHP file extension. We can see in the preview pane that Tableau has successfully read in the spatial data. On the right-hand side of the table, we see a column labeled geometry. This column also tells us whether we're looking at points, such as the coordinates of earthquake epicenters, or whether we're looking at polygons, in other words, such as the boundaries of a school district. Here we're looking at the boundaries of river basins, hence the term polygon. We'll go to Sheet 1, and to create a viz with this data, the first thing will be to drag the geometry column onto the canvas. Tableau now renders the shapes on top of a standard background map. Initially, Tableau collects all of the components into one single mark. In a second step, you'll most likely want to add a dimension to the canvas that contains the level of detail that you want to analyze. Here, for instance, we want to see one mark for each river basin, so we can drag the name pill onto detail. If you're unsure what level of detail you should be looking at, you can always untick aggregate measures in the analysis window. Now Tableau breaks up your shapes into the smallest possible units as dictated by the rows of your spatial file. Most likely you'll want to visualize some measures with your newly created map. If your spatial file already contains the data you want to show, it's simply a matter of adding the measure in question to the view. For instance, when we want to see how many species of fish there are in the different river basins, we simply drag fish onto the color field. Now we can see, for example, that with 2,500 different types of fish, the Amazon has the most species of all rivers. Often you'll be in a situation where you have the numbers you want to visualize in one file and the geographic boundaries or point coordinates of your entities in a separate file. Consider the following example, where we'd like to analyze the CO2 emission across London boroughs. We have that data in an Excel table with each row giving the emissions for one borough. But in order to show it on a map, we need to search the internet for a separate shapefile that contains the boundaries of these boroughs. This is a typical workflow when researching socioeconomic data at a local level. In Tableau, we'll connect to the shapefile first as we've done before. Now, we will click Add to include the other data, which has the CO2 numbers that we want to show. We will join these with the shapefile on the left-hand side and the data file on the right-hand side. We double-check the Tableau correctly used the columns that contain our geographic entities 
to match up with the rows in the two tables. Click the Join symbol and make sure GSS code matches code. And now we'll go to sheet one. We can drag geometry onto the canvas, name into detail, and grand total 2014 onto color. Now we can see the emissions for different burrows. Everything that we've shown here with shapefiles works also for other spatial files, such as KML and GeoJSON files. Thank you for watching this introductory video on shapefiles. If you'd like to review the topic of joins, be sure to also watch the training video entitled Data Preparation, Joins, and Unions.